The world as you know it is about to change in a way that is going to be so dramatic, you can take the last 10,000 years and condense it across the next decade, and that's the amount of change that you are gonna see. Let's talk about it. Okay guys, we need to talk because there's a lot of ignorant people walking around out there who have no idea what's coming. And I'm talking no idea. And I'm not just talking about preppers, I'm talking about normies. The people who are, you know, enamored with tech. They have no idea what's coming. So you gotta stick with me so I can explain myself to you today. Because I, you know, I, I go on social media every once in a while and I talk to people, okay? And uh, the word on the street is that people have no freaking idea what big data is, what its implications are. So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to put it in perspective for you, okay? So I want you to imagine it's World War II, okay? The Battle of Midway is about to ensue. And uh, the Americans uh, were able to decipher some code which intercepted a, a Japanese uh, comms, which notified them as to where the battleships were, okay, where the flotilla, whatever you want to call it, was in the ocean. Now, had they not had that information, there's a good chance that they would have maybe not been defeated, but, you know, there was a good chance that it uh, would not have been such a one-sided victory. Now, that was just one data point of information which practically determined the course of the war in the Pacific from that point forward. Now the same can be said with the cold breaking and the German U-boats and all that stuff that was going on in the Atlantic Ocean. Similar things, okay? One data point of information is what turned the tides. Now I want you to take one data point and I want you to multiply that data point by a thousand. And then I want you to multiply it by one million and then a trillion. And then I want you to multiply it by another trillion every year after year, then I want you to imagine a learning algorithm which crawls and analyzes all these data points to make perfect sense of it, to be able to extract all these different types of weird patterns and trends in human behavior. That, that is what you are up against. You are up against something which is a bazillion times more powerful than that one data point. And most people simply don't understand it. You just think that you're uploading photos to social media. Most people don't understand the sheer amount of information which is being accumulated about you right now. You know, I just realized I should probably go cyberpunk for this video. We're gonna put up the hoodie like that. This is a hunting sweater. You can put up the uh, scent protection. This is actually a really good hunting sweater by Under Armour. I guess they get a free plug. Doesn't make noise, moisture wicking, all that good stuff. Put on the shades too. Oh, the shades are gonna fog up. To hell with this, let's just keep the hood. So anyways, the digital trail that you leave is so deep and so complex and intricate that we are going to reach a point in the next few years where people are going to finally realize what has happened. Listen, if you are on a platform and the service is free, you are the product. Repeat after me. If the service is free, the product is me. If the service is free, the product is me. You need to comprehend that. Anything that's free, all of this data, which is being accumulated right now, has to be stored somewhere. And they're not just storing it because they're nice guys. The reason why they're storing it is because it has incredible value. Imagine the power if you could predict almost to 99.999% certainty what a person was going to do next. Okay, imagine that. Now on average, and this is a stat from a couple years ago, the average person uploads, I think it's like two megabits per second every day in data. And that's not just 
uploading photos and you know that's engaging that's doing searches all of that data is being stored somewhere every time you run a search every time you carry your cell phone somewhere every time you send a text message all of these things it's all being recorded now try this trick after this video is over go to google my activity okay just go into google and enter google my activity and it's going to break down for you all of the information just that one company has on you okay this isn't facebook this isn't twitter this isn't snapchat TikTok, anything like that this is just the almighty google okay not even apple you know who else tesla now the self-driving thing okay listen to this your web and app activity your entire youtube history emphasis on entire youtube history your location history all the places you have visited even if you've inputted information about where you visited or not, if you carry a smartphone around or if you log in from different locations, it knows where you are. It could probably even determine where you are on the basis of your other habits, you know, just aggregate data of your daily routine, okay? Then there's all the comments that you've ever left on YouTube are on the servers, okay? They're out there, guys. You need to understand this. All of your liked and like disliked videos all of your interest as based on, you know, the algorithm that serves you up more of the same, the, the whole filter bubble thing, and your phone records, all your text, your news preferences, and these are all things you can go in and manipulate on Google My Activity. Um, all the surveys that you've partook in, all the, your internet search history, of course, and all of those ramifications of that, and all of your activity on individual websites, the interactions that you've had with advertisements, any purchases you've downloaded, all of your credit card information, probably dozens, if, if you're like me, hundreds of passwords, okay, to various programs, uh, voice recognition, facial recognition, and that is just skimming the surface of what they offer there. So go and check that out after the video if you wanna see who you really are. And the reason why I say that is because look, like from a psychologist's perspective, most people don't truly understand themselves because if you truly know yourself, you know, to truly know oneself, it's such an abstract concept in itself, you know, self-actualization, knowing thyself, it's a very difficult thing for anybody to truly achieve. And even the most successful and ethical amongst us, the Mother Teresa's, even they, you know, don't truly have self-awareness 24 seven. Maybe they get glimpses of it every once in a while, but we're talking about data that knows you better than you know yourself, that knows what you're gonna do in two hours before you even get there. Because based on what you've done in the past, and then of course you add you know, smart technology, which is gonna be more and more invasive as time goes on. So we are only scratching the surface. This is only the beginning. If you think this is a lot of information, this is nothing compared to what is coming. This is just the zygote phase of all of this. And this is why I get a little upset when I hear uh, preppers not understand the simple concept that the pen is mightier than the sword. Look who got canceled after this election. I mean, think about the power of that. I've talked about that on this channel before. The power of that, look, you can go around and you can LARP in the woods with your AR-15, and I'm not you know, poking fun at anybody in particular, but I'm just saying, if you don't understand big data, if you don't understand big tech, then you are going to be left behind. You're not going to be able to navigate the world that is coming. So you need to be able to, number one, accept that this is happening, not accept it in the sense that you need to, you know, concede all of your information to big tech, but just have an awareness and a respect for the power here. We are talking about something a trillion times more powerful than the code that was able to win the Battle of Midway here. We're talking about that trillions of times over and analyzed by a super intelligent computer. That's what we are talking about here. So the only way you are going to be able to navigate this world is if you understand the jargon, is if you understand tech. You need to educate yourself about these things. It doesn't matter if you're off grid, living in the wilderness, that's great. You know, that's what I aspire to do. That's what I think that a lot of us should try to do to the best of our capability, if that's obviously something you wanna do. But that doesn't mean you can just be ignorant to this type of thing that's out there. Another way to conceptualize this is this, and I don't know how true this is, but the amount of data produced in the last 
few years alone. I think the stat I heard was two, but I'm gonna say a few because I'm gonna be conservative. I don't wanna be hyperbolic, but I'm pretty sure this is accurate. The amount of data produced in the last few years is greater than all of the data produced in the 10,000 years of human history prior to that, okay? Now that's doubling every few years and it's going to reach an exponential inflection point as this technology, these sensors, this smart dust becomes more ubiquitous. And you need to understand that everything that you do is being converted into a number, into a bigger data point. And as time goes on, day after day, the algorithm gets smarter and smarter and smarter. And arguably, we as a civilization get dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber. Yes, let's make all let's all make references to the movie Idiocracy in the comment section. Great movie, really the most prescient movie I think I've probably ever seen, besides uh, uh, Demolition Man, which seems to be coming true in a lot of ways as well. So a lot of preppers or traditionalist people seem to come at this from one of two ways. They seem to think that, ah, it's not a big deal, and you know, I got my AR, I'll be able to take on anything that comes, even if it is in the form of a Boston Dynamics robot, which is fully autonomous and has like these drones that pop out of its shoulders and shoot laser beams at you or whatever the heck. Sounds crazy, but guess what? It ain't too crazy because the whole drone revolution is gonna be kicked up a notch in the next few years too, guys. I'm telling, listen, <laughs> You got to take this shit seriously. This is not science fiction, okay? So there's that person. Then there's the other more technophobic type prepper who just doesn't want to get involved with technology at all. And I'm telling you, you don't want to be left in the dust. Now, then there's the normies, okay, who jump on this tech and just, you know, are completely oblivious in the same way that this is a dangerous amount of data. You know, we're always hearing about big data, big data, but a lot of people don't really have a mental benchmark to understand the true power of big data until, until it bites you in the ass someday. And it's going to. So at this point in time, there's two things. We're relying on the goodwill of big tech, and we're also relying on the innovation of techies of these cyberpunks and that's why the whole the cyberpunk thing is important for preparedness because it's those people who are going to be able to like you can't asymmetrically go against something it's like trying to shoot a virus okay you can't shoot a virus if you do yeah the virus is going to die but so is the person you're trying to save okay so you can't approach this problem like it's a nail and you're a hammer this is going to require a more surgically precise set of tools to tackle this problem which makes me want to get into coding or want to get into some sort of computer stuff because that really is where the future is at and i'm talking this is going to be so accelerated now in the next five years. It's my belief that in the next two years, possibly 18 months, um, the artificial intelligence and machine learning, there's gonna be some massive breakthrough there, okay? Because you have all of these different uh, discoveries converging right now and they all kind of feed into one another in a positive feedback loop. I've talked about this at length on the channel before. But in the next 18 months to 24 months, we are gonna see something so game-changing, so revolutionary that you're gonna look at your smartphone and you're gonna be like, what the hell is this? Okay, because we haven't really had, since the invention of the smartphone, it hasn't really changed that much. The smartphone is still practically the same tool as it was back in uh, 2008, and we're all the same tools for using it, right? So get ready, guys, prepare yourself, go off-grid, but use the grid to get off grid and absolutely do not underestimate the sheer power of big data and the power of the nerds. The pen is mightier than the sword. It's great to have a stockpile of ammunition for self-defense and hunting purposes if the shit hits the fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's like day one stuff, okay? But above and beyond that, you need to prepare for the tech dystopia, the possibility for tech dystopia for AI gone awry or for the wielders of AI. Because remember what Vladimir Putin said. He said that whoever creates artificial intelligence first will rule the world forever, basically. Because for a lot variety of reasons that we're not going to get into. But 
Whoever wins that race, it's winner takes all. Okay, I'm going to leave you with one more thought today. There was a guy who did a documentary called We Live in Public. He was one of the dot-com millionaires, okay, in the year 2000. And a very, very prophetic documentary. Basically predicted social media to a T, okay? This guy was doing live streaming of his life in the year 1999 before most people even knew what the internet really was or what its capabilities were. He predicts that we have about three or four years before full-on turnkey totalitarianism kicks in. I don't know what the implications of that are, but basically, as he claims, it's going to be like we walk into a cage and we can never, ever get out again. And we're currently building this cage around us. Now, granted, he's fairly eccentric and I think he's probably somewhat lost his mind since then. And some people would argue he had lost his mind then. But sometimes, you know, it takes a crazy person to predict the future. So I'm going to post some links to We Live in Public and I'll post a link to his actual speech or talk that he gave, which to be quite honest, it really wasn't that good. But because his predictions about social media have been so accurate in the past, I'm definitely listening to what he has to say. I'm not saying that I'm rolling with it and I'm banking on us all living in a, a brave new world in 1984 in three or four years, but it's worth listening to anyways. So check it out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you enjoy the video, don't forget guys, you are humanity's only hope. You are the resistance. Sort of. Some of you are probably conformists and part of the problem, but that's okay too, because hey, what the hell, life is short. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.